Hello and welcome to FortiGuard Live. I'm Derek Mankey, Chief of Security Insights with FortiGuard Labs. And joining me today, very special guest, Carl Windsor, field CTO. Great to speak with you, Carl. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting few, interesting week. Feels like a month. Interesting. <laughs> interesting is, uh, well, tis the season, like we like to say, right? It seems yeah, to happen uh, uh, every December. I know you've been super busy. Um, you know, we all have. And uh, you've heard of this uh, Log4J, log, Log4Shell thing, haven't you? Uh, yeah, just a little <laughs> bit uh, over the past few weeks. So yeah, so, from 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 both inside, you know, uh, our actions that Fortinet have taken, uh, both to ha helping our customers to protect their networks. Yeah, and I, I always, you know, want to say that uh, here we go again, right? I mean, obviously, we talked about if we look back a year ago, what happened with solar winds breaking. These are all sort of different beasts, but there is some underlying uh, things that that happen with these campaigns, right? And this has been. You know, if we look at histories from the past, I, I remember back in 2008, you know, dating myself here a bit, right, with uh, conf the Conficker worm. That was, you know, when, when we looked at the vulnerability naming scheme, was, there was less than 100 at that point. It was MS08067 uh, that Conficker started to leverage. It actually turned itself into a worm and, and managed to uh, to leverage that, that uh, exploit code. And it was still, you know, we we're still getting detections on that 10 years later. So I think... When we look at what's happened now with these vulnerabilities being essentially commoditized, put into, uh, you know, piggybacked onto different code, like we're seeing uh, with Mariah, and there's at least 10 different campaigns that are leveraging this now, um, this is going to this is going to be going on for a while, I think, right? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think we're going to be finding uh, instances of this code for many, many years to come. Uh, it's going to be exploited for different year, for a long, long while. And I think the methods of exploiting it are going to change. You know, there's, it's been very easy to um, uh, to spray um, connections like a, a web to a to a web page uh, and use a host head host header in the connection string. But there are going to be many, many other methods of uh, connecting in from things like connecting to Wi-Fi networks that triggers a log, uh, even to things like SMS based systems anything that can log will be uh, a target going forwards uh, and i think that just leaves the the whole scope to be very huge very very broad uh, and i expect it, uh, the different exploitation methods to 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 grow as uh, time goes on for sure yeah absolutely and it's not you know the the thing with this is that it's it's so much in the spotlight and the community. Yes, the security community uh, has been very focused on this, but of course the bad guys are also very focused on this as always. And I think you're, you're right. I mean, we've definitely seen that in terms of the campaigns already that are, are capitalizing on. To, to my knowledge in recent history, this is one of the larger, in terms of the amount of different campaigns, especially this quickly, when we're talking about a two week period or so at this, uh, you know, for time frame, uh, that, that, that's a lot, right? I mean, again, going back to half name and proxy login, we saw Deer Cry, uh, that was one campaign. There is there is a handful of them, um, but this the timeline seems to also be speeding up as to how quickly they're actually starting to leverage this. Like, you know, went from proof of concept code in the wild, that initial canary with the Minecraft server to now all these different, you know, uh, campaigns and it's just beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think the good news here is that as a security industry, we've mobilized a lot faster, you know, generally uh, than than maybe we've done uh, previously from people looking at the code. This has gone from one vulnerability to three vulnerabilities very quickly because we've realized that some of these projects are, um, you know, they're holding up the Internet. You know, they're, they're small projects that maybe people haven't heard of. But they're actually critical to to the to many many uh, products running on the internet. So the fact that everybody's got their eyes on the code, that they're mobilizing quickly to take an action, I think, is. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's unheard of, but it's definitely going in the right direction uh, for us to be able to deal with these things quickly. But at the same time, the threat actors are also doing the same thing and uh, mobilizing to make uh, to make use of the vulnerabilities. So, yeah, we we're doing much better than we have done as an in industry, but I think we've still got a way to go yet. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it does go to show that patching does work and it is critical, especially in timelines when you look at this. I mean, just those vulnerabilities went from 2.14 to 2.15, 2.16 to 2.17 now, this is up. But, you know, that all happened within the span of a week. And uh, 
um, you know, it just, it just shows how agile the, the cyber criminals are when it comes to being able to, to leverage these vulnerabilities too. You know, thankfully, these are things being discovered by the security. So it's, it's really a crowdsourcing essentially to harden uh, these products as well, which is another angle to look at it, right? Yeah, I, I think one other thing as well that I think we're going to find in uh, in coming uh, in coming months uh, that that will pick up because of this is actually how we harden our own infrastructures. So, yeah. uh, I mean, this is something that the U.S. government have put uh, have mandated as a requirement as part of the their cybersecurity strategy. But being able to have software bill of materials for your products and your services that you're offering, um, I'm something the Fortinet have done for a while. But if all if everybody had a software bill of materials that they could say, ah. I've got this product in my network. I know exactly where it is. It's here. I need to go and patch. I need to remediate. We'd be you know, generally the whole, you know, the whole industry would be in a much better shape. So I think we'll see changes coming in those kind of areas as well to bring other ideas and other concepts in and maybe accelerate some of those really good ideas. I mean, I was on the. Um, uh, CISA software bill of materials, the uh, S bombarama as they called it last week, um, yeah. and I think this is something that is just going to massively take off. Uh, being able because it gives you the ability to to really look inside your infrastructure and understand the impact that these uh, these uh, softwares are having on on your security. Yeah, and it becomes more of a fine tuned process too. I mean, this isn't the first time the industry has faced like in terms of. Like, yes, we're talking about millions of applications, a very wide deployment base, but we have seen these, you know, broad reaching, uh, you know, impacts in the past. Um, some that come to mind, you know, uh, I think eight years ago now, like shell shock, you know, heart bleed. Um, but the difference being now, I think it is starting to become, like you said, more in tune. It's becoming more when it comes to the way that, that we actually look at responding to these, everything from you know, uh, the patch management cycle, the SOC to everything that we're doing, of course, in FortiGuard Labs with uh, fabric and mesh coverage too, that all comes into play to, uh, uh, you know, holistically approach, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and this is, we try to bring this together for, for our customers as well. So, because we're, we're trying to help our customers to secure their networks, we're trying to bring all of this, you know, more complex tech, I, um, um, sort of concepts uh, in a lot of areas together so that they can easily secure their networks. And this is what we've tried to achieve through our, our outbreak uh, alerts. Yeah. So you know, not everybody is, you know, uh, um, um, a trained threat analyst like yourself. Uh, they're not working on these products day in, day out. So what we've tried to do is to simplify the process for them with our outbreak alerts so that you can see very easily when these kind of new outbreaks, whether it's, you know, shell shock, whether it's uh, log4j or, or whichever one it happens to be next, uh, you can very easily run the outbreak alert on your infrastructure. It'll tell you if there's any indicators of compromise and very easily just tell you what you need to do to secure your network. Um, so hopefully some of the steps we're taking uh, can, can give the knowledge that we have and try and push it out to our customers to simplify this process. Yeah, and I think it's important to to mention, I think we, we touched on this before, there's not just one vector here, it's evolving, right? So certainly, mm -hmm. if you look at how we responded to this with FortiGuard Labs, December 9th, of course, the exploit proof of concept uh, posted, you know, within 24 hours, we had our threat signal up in response. Also, our, our outbreak alert, which you're referring to, which shows more than just the IPS coverage, right? Showing everything from our our fabric. And, and it's important to realize that this is a defense in depth. We talk about defense in depth a lot, but specifically here, right? Um, there is a lot of effort on the cyber criminal end and e even, you know, APTs that could potentially leverage this on obfuscation and, you know, trying to get around strings. And like you said, tweak this a lot in, in, in their attack code. And we fully expect to see that. Uh, but beyond just IPS, of course, you got to realize how, you know, in, in addition to the vulnerability itself, they're going to have associated payload, new new malware families probably being written to incorporate that. Different vectors like you know spear phishing targeted attacks, as an example, trying to um, uh, trying to also install those binaries that will leverage that to, to do lateral movement, as an example too. So um, you know that 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 defense in depth and that breadth of coverage, I think, is a really important factor here. 
Yeah, and that's where the outbreak uh, alerts really come into their own because they look across the whole of the security fabric, uh, yeah. and it might look at you know WAF signatures for uh, to protect uh, web servers. It may look at IPS signatures, as you mentioned. Uh, as malware families start to get utilised, we'll bring in the malware families, um, and and then it down to things like threat hunting with uh, EDR and other techniques that might be available to uh, uh, to look for threats on the network. Uh, vulnerability analysis tools to be able to scan your network and look for the actual vulnerability you know, on your network. So that's why the outbreak alerts are so, so, so powerful because you can, uh, one, you can run them to find out what happened maybe historically on your network. Yeah. Uh, and two, you can then uh, on an ongoing basis, keep that going uh, and, and keep looking because as you said, this is changing. It's a, it's a very dynamic, uh, it's a dynamic issue. Uh, it's changing. This, people are finding ways to bypass, to obfuscate. So we need to keep the, that ability to keep looking for changing, for being dynamic. Uh, and that's where the outbreak alerts really do come into their own. Yeah, absolutely. And be able to do it frequently too, right? Because it is, it's not just a static snapshot. Um, you know, we talked about in the threat predictions for 2022, one of the items was a feeding frenzy. So the, the whole notion of these fresh, you know, holes like this uh, that, that's happened, that we're going to see that window shrinking in terms of attack activity. Again, if we look going back to Hafnium, it, it was within, I think, four days. Um, it's even been quicker this time, right, uh, that we've seen malware payloads. So um, I think it's really important to keep looking at this, uh, not only from a, a human kind of analyst perspective, but using tools like that, using the, the outbreak de detection service, having something that can be automated and scalable to, to detect the threats too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there are other uh, there are other values that Fortinet can bring to the table, such as our SOC as a service. So we can, mm -hmm. you know, help our customers to to see what's going on on, on their network, to filter out the noise because this is hugely noisy. The the number yeah. of uh, IPS triggers we're seeing is huge, but being able to filter the noise and be able to get to w whether or not the, the the there is actually a problem is something that's really important, and that's where things like our SOC as a service can come into play as well yeah absolutely and it's not a matter of if but when that the, this is going to come knocking on the door i mean like like you said even the ips triggers are low and i think we're talking about it in the millions now um and you got to remember too that they're automating the process on their on their end i mean i often talk about offensive uh, automation and weaponizing that and absolutely we're seeing that and, and especially if if and when we actually do see this in Incorporated into a true worm like WannaCry, that number is just going to explode even further. So it's good to have all that up front, um, I think, uh, from, from a mitigation standpoint. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been, it was good news that the initial worm that we were all panicking about didn't really come to fruition. It's not uh, a true worm yet. But like you say, this yeah. is going to change. This is going to morph, and I see, you know, potentially, you know, the 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 worm code could come out, but also different. Uh, I expect there to be you know, maybe other vulnerabilities coming off with yeah. a lot of eyes on the code. So there may be some more vulnerabilities, um, but also different attack vectors, you know, and and being able to adapt and and when we know about the potential attack vectors, be able to detect them uh, and alert without generating too much noise, which I think is the problem we have at the moment, is you know, to really understand you know, how this is going to get uh, exploited in the future. That's really the important task here that we're working heavily on at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing a great job. Thanks so much, Carl. And yeah, it's been an interesting trend as this unfolds. We've already seen, again, we've seen ransomware like Kukon Singh. We've seen uh, Orcus Rat, so old school remote access uh, uh, Trojans. We've seen crypto miners, a lot of ELF binaries, so like Linux-based malware, which is also, uh, so I think IoT as well, right? That's a lot of the target platforms for this too. So I think a lot more to unfold with that. I know we could talk about this for hours, but um, I, I know you uh, you have your day job, Carl, and there's uh, a lot going on. I really appreciate your time. Uh, for everyone listening, you can find out more updates. This is a dynamic situation, like we said, so you can find out more at blog.fortinet.com under our threat research category. Uh, we have everything from uh, P-Cert advisories to our security blog, updated telemetry and what we're seeing. Um, you can also find our threat signals on fortiguard.com and the outbreak alerts themselves uh, listed there too. Um, once again, Carl, thanks so much for your time. Um, yep. It's been a pleasure no speaking with you.
Yeah, thanks and, so much. Uh, hopefully we have a little bit quieter uh, uh, Christmas. But we'll <laughs> Here's hoping. That, that, that'll be a Christmas gift on its own, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thanks, Carl. I'm Derek Mankey with Portico Live signing off.